God is the answer to this great question, why is there a universe? Why is there something instead of nothing? It's not the only possible answer, but it's a really good answer. And it's one that's self-consistent and it's one that gives me confidence to go on and continue you know, being in love with this God. It tells me that God loves a universe that's beautiful, that's logical, that's elegant, and that isn't always so easy to understand. But as a scientist, when I do get a new bit of understanding, when I go, oh, that's what it's about, I get that same sense of joy that I get in a moment of prayer. I feel like I'm related to the same God, both when I do my science and when I pray. God is ultimately a, a God of love. And love only happens when you've got an other. God created us not to be God, but to be creatures who could return God's love and be part of God's love and share God's love. God is the source of good, but because we've received this good, we have the free will to do good things on our own, to offer back to God. And sometimes it's like the little kid who draws a scrawl and mom puts up on the refrigerator door. You know, the little kid's scrawl is not a Picasso, but it's the act of love of that little kid and the mom loves the little kid enough to put it up in the refrigerator. We're children in that sense. And the love that a child gives back to a parent is a great example of the love that we give back to God. And so at the end of the day, we are creatures of love. Sounds like a rock song. Uh, but we are. And one of the reasons I do astronomy is because it's my way that I can express my love for this creator. Other people have other ways of expressing it, whether it's you know singing music, doing dance, raising a family. All of these different creative acts are ways that we give back to God our efforts from our love in response to his effort and his love. It seems like a big theme of creation is you know God's love. So uh, how do you guys think that the universe reflects that, you know? Well, I think that since we're all made in God's image and likeness, and if God is love, then when like the universe and creation be love, because everything is made in his image. Like, that's what I feel about that. Yeah. I think that if God didn't love us, he wouldn't have made the universe, because he wouldn't have went through like all the work to create everything if he didn't love us. I think that God loved us so much. He gave us souls and minds to be able to think and to ask questions so we could learn more about him and the universe that he put us in. You can also say that God loves us so much that he sent down his only son to die for us so that we may be saved. I think merely just looking at the universe and all the wonderful things in it is just one of the ultimate showings of God's love. I mean, if you look at simple pictures of space, of earth, of jungles, or of stars, of galaxies, it's all so amazing and so wonderful. And to, to the human eye, it's like so complicated, so amazing. But to like someone who like thinks, wow, that's God's creation, it's just so amazing because it, oh, it's so hard to explain, but it's so wonderful at the all same that time. For us, kind of yeah. thing. I think that so vast is the universe, that is so vast God's love for us. He creates something so complex, so large, that is beyond our comprehending. And if that's like even the vaguest equivalent of God's love, that means God's love for us is still growing. It's still growing yeah, greater for never, all of us. Never it's ending. never going to end. It's just going to keep growing and getting greater. The church hopes that science and religion will not always be at odds. In fact, the church blesses the work of all scientists. In Vatican II document called The Church in the Modern World, the church reflected on the work of scientists and called them the humble and persevering investigators of the secrets of nature. And reflected that their work is being led, as it were, by the hand of God in spite of himself. For it is God, the conservator of all things, who made them what they are. Finally, Brother Guy talks about how astronomy has been an integral part of church history. And how studying the cosmos has been a spiritual mission in giving praise to the Creator. The Vatican has supported astronomy for a long time. One of the first reasons they hired a bunch of astronomers was to reform the calendar. We, the calendar we use now is the Gregorian calendar because Pope Gregory XIII set it up. And it's this mathematical system that allows us to work out when do you have leap years, 
when do you set the date of Easter? And that was all solved about 400, 500 years ago. It was not until the late 19th century, 1891, that Pope Leo XIII said specifically, the Vatican is going to have an official observatory. Part of it was political. The Vatican wanted to show its independence from Italy at those days. He also wanted to show the world that the church was not against science, but in fact supported science. They originally built the telescopes for the observatory on the walls of the Vatican itself. But then, you know, electric lights were invented and the city lights of Rome made it impossible to do astronomy there. So in the 30s, they moved out to the Pope's summer home and they built a couple of telescopes on the Pope's palace in Castel Gandolfo. City lights came out there. So by the 1980s, and they set up an outpost at the University of Arizona in Tucson, Arizona. Why there? It's one of the great spots for astronomy in the world because it's a desert and you've got mountains and it's dry and there already were a lot of telescopes there and a lot of people we could work with. So there's a dozen of us Jesuit astronomers. We come from all over the world, four continents, seven countries, a dozen languages among us. And we're there to show the astronomers that the church is supporting their work and to show the church that astronomy is a great way of giving praise to the Creator. I think it's really interesting how the Vatican had telescopes for the astronomers so they could um, study the stars. It shows that they really don't have a conflict. That's for true. I think like the more people that like, realize that it's so different, the more people are going to become one and they're not going to, we're not going to have so much disagreement in the world. Yeah. And you know, the three wise men were astronomers and they were looking at the stars and that's what eventually led them to Jesus and the, and the nativity story. It reminds me of a scripture in the beginning there was word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became man and everything. And it just goes to show that in the beginning of time, whenever there, we were created, that there was God. Today, there still is God and in the future, there will always be God. That's deep. <laughs> Our knowledge of the universe is constantly evolving and being rewritten to reflect new discoveries. But God's truth is never outdated. His love for creation is eternal. How does your faith help you to understand your place in the universe? We'd love to hear from you. Contact us through our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com. Or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And we'll leave you today with a passage from Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky proclaims its builder's craft. One day to the next conveys that message. One night to the next imparts that knowledge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.